glasses have come off. This is part two of the damn trial. Oh no. Oh no, that that was just all sorts of bullshit. No. No, I'm not taking that. Now let me close that out because that really did help. I did not I did not notice that was there, but I'm glad it was there. Cause I swear to God that was just that was terrible. That was awful. <clears throat> I didn't like it one bit. That first part, that was total bullshit. Even with the walkthrough, it, it never said, oh, hey, this one part. Did you press everything? I pressed everything. Did you press everything? No. Then just say press everything. You know, if, if it's to where you need to press everything, press everything. Moving on. We are in part two. Let me get out of here. All right. <clears throat> now, part two. Let me get my screen up like so. And here we go. Numerous doubts. <laughs> there were four passages that night. It's really, but it just, uh, just at that time, I was uh, at that time as a passenger. I saw the coach fee was five years. Tab of scan. I was forced to see something so horrifying. It's too much to bear. Mr. McGundle stabbed the victim. What I saw was the unshakable truth. I do believe that he stabbed him, yes. So, what exactly does this mean? The fifth passenger, but our job. The root of all this that the mischief of that coachman there. Ugh. Oi! Beppo! Yes, boss! The fate that the coachman's grilled green on was supposed to be full paint. And you pocketed that you paint, did you? Which called it would ask for this badge, and there weren't many cards. Not very proper coachman conversations. Oh, I am sorry. Mapo, you prat! Thanks to you, our credibility has taken a beat! But, sir, I. Just a week before, I had to pay 10 pence to ride the omnibus. Bollocks! Five pence more. No, five times four pounds. That makes 20 pence. Damn! They're swindling people! I've calculated 10 times over, but the result refuses to change. Yeah, they've been swindling people! Well, yeah, so won't. It appears that one of our doubts have been clarified. In any case, attorney, the court hereby has orders that you begin your cross examination. The closing argument served no function rather than prolonging this trial. I pray that you will do your utmost to entertain us. Of course.
Now, just, just now, you testified that you witnessed the moment that the victim was stabbed. <laughs> Sir? Mr. Fairplay? Excuse me, Mr. Fla Mr. Fairplay. You. What do you need? Does this testimony help you remember anything at all? Also, I happen to notice that you're always looking away. Is there something you're not telling us? Nothing in particular. This guy is not particularly useful. It's none of your business, okay? Moments ago, this trial was about to come to a close. But somehow we've managed to keep hanging on. I need to uncover some new information from this cost to the no matter what. Yeah, he is hiding something. However, if you would just thoughtlessly press these witnesses, you may end up revealing information that could prove you decidedly, decisively against our case. But if I let that scare me, we'll end up losing the vital information we need as well. Indeed, you are correct. At any rate, I can't let even the smallest reaction escape my sight. So if an unusual reaction catches your attention, question them on everything you've got. Just now you testified that the witness the moment Just now you testified that you witnessed the moment that the victim was stabbed. If I recall, the victim was lying on the floor and stabbed with an underhanded grip. You look like you have a question, sir! Mr. Fairplay, what do you need? He really is. That's why I keep pressing him. I misunderstood. Well, what are you saying just now? If I recall you at that time, you. Dude? Excuse me, Mr. Fairplay. That's what you need. Does this testimony help you remember anything at all? Also, I happen to notice that you're always looking away. There's something you're not telling us. Nothing in 
protector. I draw a sword on his ass. While driving my omnibus, I heard a loud screaming out from the rooftop. Jeez. <laughs> ah, that was probably me. And then when I turned to look, yes, that's what I saw so, so from the, the sky. The victim was on the floor, and the knife was sticking down his chest. One holding the knife was that local celebrity over there in the show. You mean say that you didn't see the moment it was Ben and stabbed the victim? Up to now, I was convinced that I saw it happen, but. No, I know you have something to say. You got something to say. I know you got something to say. Mr. Fair Play. Well, now that I really think about it. Please. I want you to share with the rest of the class, please. Oh! Yes? It would be far too convenient if I actually, I actually see the very moment it happened. Yes? Mr. Fairplay! You seem like you have something you want to say! If I may, Mr. Fairplay. I can see it through you all! Right now, I pass. You are all thinking it would be far too convenient for him to have actually seen the very moment it happened. Aren't you? Well, be it as it may, this is a fair place getting pretty worked up. Depending on my answer, I might be able to squeeze some new information out of him. He just happened to catch a glimpse of the crime as he was committed. Is that, is that plausible? Nice story, but I don't buy it. That is, not unless you have been peeking for the skylight for the entire trip. <laughs> peeking? I'll have you know I'm a banker from the big city. Yeah, and I have, and I have a friend who's an, an accountant. What you gotta say, bitch? Why, I, on my own, I'm a banker. My, my, my memory is crystal clear. My memory of that dreadful scene. If you please. Yes, my lord. Please add what you recall of the scene that you witnessed to your testimony. Oh, alright. Okay, you can count on me. I'll never forget the sight of his hands. Both covered in blood after the stabbing. Okay, sir. Let me just bring this to your attention, sir. This right here. This right here. See, see this right here. See, I want you to take a good look at this. Just, just, just take a good look at this. Look at this. Just, just look at this, sir. Look at this right here. 
Both hands were covered in blood. Then. Well, maybe covered was a bit of an exaggeration, but anyway, his hands were stained red with blood. Both of them clear as day. I'm sorry, but something seems fishy here. What? These are the gloves which Mr. Magundal was wearing on that night. This glove. These gloves do have dark stains on them. However, as you can see, only the right glove is stained with blood. Oh! What is wrong with you, dog? What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Fair play, what the fuck, man? You're not a squirrel, dude. Stop it. You're not you're not even a beaver. Stop it. You're not a squirrel nor beaver. Good lord. Shit. Like, it's like what are you doing? Therefore, Mr. Fairplay, I don't know if I had to ask you to, I don't know, um, get yourself a sandwich first. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> The jimmies have been rustled. <laughs> the jimmies haven't been rustled. Your testimony is nothing short of foul play. Ugh. This can't be. There's no way. You're lying, young man. Oh. 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 Yep, you made it clear as day. <laughs> Mr. Fairplay, if your words were lies, then your entire testimony should be called into question. When you said that you saw the moment the victim was stabbed, was that really the truth? <laughs> He's still nodding, dude! <laughs> All men make mistakes. You cannot accuse everyone of lying. Indeed, it was just one hand rather than both. Ultimately, the fact that the gloves were bloodstained is unequivocal. However, Mr. Fairplay insisted that he was absolutely sure. It's possible that this witness has been deliberately lying to us. <laughs> Someone get this man a sandwich. Why? Even though I am an officer, Fair play supposedly has no reason to lie. Oh, is that really the case? No, no, no. If you can prove that he does have a reason to lie, I believe the direction of this trial will change entirely. Do I have evidence to show that he has reason to forge his testimony? Yeah, we do. My lord. What is his attorney? The defense is ready to present evidence. Evidence? This witness has reason to lie in his testimony regarding Mr. McGonnell. Very well. Now I must order the defense to present the next piece of evidence. What evidence will prove that the eyewitness testimony may have been lying? Register. <laughs> the register. 
or as they call it here, the ledger. <laughs> Indeed, this evidence does reveal certain possibilities. The possibility they have to throw out random evidence to save yourself. Remember that Atane. Ah! Oh, no, hold on. It could be that perhaps there's some hint among our evidence that we hadn't noticed yet. I suggest you check the court record once more. I have to examine the evidence more carefully. Very well, now I'm on one of the Yeah. hold secrets all about this ledger must hold secrets about hey what's going on man this ledger must hold secrets all about all sorts of things with gentlemen I imagine hmm. I'm not sure if such information should be available to us well it's not like we know any English gentlemen other than that great detective question. You will not find Sherlock Holmes' name in this book. You? That aside, let's take a closer look. No, I don't. I don't know anything about Warhammer 40k. One listing yet another gentleman of London. Well, we don't really know if they're gentlemen. Not everyone in the Great British Empire is highborn. Uh, 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 what's wrong? Look right here. Look at this name. Oscar Fairplay. Uh, who's that again? I can't keep these Western names straight, but it's familiar. That's the name of the gentleman on the witness stand at this very moment. Nomming on his stick. Oh, oh the banker you mean! Why is his name in this book? I see it's written here that he has an outstanding debt of 20 guineas. Looks like he's due to repay his debt very soon. It may just be a coincidence, but we still have to... But we should take a note of this, just in case. Updated! Sir, I bring this to your attention. <laughs> this is Mr. Magondo's account ledger. Among the people who suffer is a name that should be familiar to everyone here. Oscar Fairplay. What in the world? Witness, did you borrow money from the defendant? Oh, you wouldn't go so far as card one. You borrowed 20 guineas. That's quite a large sum, isn't it? <laughs> so what? What's the big deal about it? If 
by any chance Mr. Magondo was declared guilty. What might happen to that dead of yours? According to the document, this was a private loan from the defendant. Therefore, if, if the defendant were to receive the death penalty, the contract would be annulled and Mr. Fairbairn's death would essentially vanish. Vanish? Now, Mr. Fairplay, through this false eyewitness testimony of yours, were you trying to make your 20 guinea debt vanish? Order! 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 Oscar Fairplay! I will ask you one. Keep in mind that your answer will have tremendous importance. Indeed. Did you? Did you truly believe that any moment the victim was stabbed by the defendant? Give this man a sandwich. Give this man, like, a, a stick of beef jerky. Give this man something. Damn. His silence tells us all we need to know. Mr. Fairplay, you haven't told us the truth. Wait, please. Sergeant, I, I may have gone a tiny bit too far. A tiny bit? Really? However, at the very least, if there's anything I can claim with confidence, is that I saw blood on that criminal's hands. But remember, we only found traces of blood on one of his gloves. Yes, but... <coughs> Excuse me, might I have a moment? Oh, Mr. Lady Frog? Uh, the truth is, I some neglect to see that as well. Seeing what? Uh, the, uh, the culprit's hands, they were blood. Uh, it really was both hands. Uh, I think. You think? What? Appears that we need to request another testimony. Testimony on what these witnesses really saw and what they did not see. Is that agreeable? <laughs> not all though. The table seemed to have turned in this trial. Yeah, you're right. This might finally be the chance for a counterattack. What I really saw, or what we really saw. Both of the culprit's hands were stained with blood I remember clearly. I swear. But I suppose you could say. I did not see the instant the defendant stabbed the victim. I recall both the knife that stabbed the victim and the blood of the murderer's hand as well. I, I only had this game for the roof seats. I didn't see anything. Either way, if there were any passengers, I think we would have all seen them. Witnesses, you didn't see the moment the crime was committed? I am deeply sorry, but, but Lord Judge, my lord, there were no other passengers on the honorable, on the commentary of the of Lord. I'm not just a sinner, sinner, sinner. 
No, 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 it's not the same at all. Very right once more in the interior of the omnibus. As the testimony states, the crime is stained with blood from the moment of the crime. Hence, it can be said that the circumstances overall have not changed in even the slightest. Hmm. Now then, attorney, I want you to carry out the cross examination. Yes, my lord. What I really saw? Yeah, I know, right? the <laughs> cop Yes, he literally just said. <laughs> You both witnessed the incident from the rooftop seating area, right? Yes, 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 indeed! The seats felt like they were nearly solid from me. Yeah, I saw it too while I was shivering from the cold. If I may ask, why were you gentlemen sitting on the roof in the first place? Yes, well, you, you see, we were. I was entirely unable to enter the omnibus. You were unable to enter? Why couldn't you enter the coach? The coach was not from the inside. We even knocked and we were let in. It was locked. And that's right! Omnibuses should be open to all. Whose right idea was it to lock us outside? When I went to knock, it looked like they were shooting They were shooting me away from inside. And so because of that, we sat on the roof and watched them through the skylight. In fact, you could even say we were glaring at them. And that's when we, we could both say that the following with utmost confidence. Had there been another person inside, absolutely would have seen them. The fact is this What's going on with this testimony? So they could see everyone inside the coast through the skyline, huh? That may be wrong. Mr. Fairplay, please confirm this for us once more. While aboard this omnibus, the both of you witnessed the incident through the skylight while seated on the roof, correct? Indeed, that is correct. In that case, it seems there was a place inside the coach where you couldn't be seen, couldn't have seen the passenger. What? But there can't be. Now, at this time, I might add, I might not be able to make this claim with absolute certainty. But when the incident occurred, there's a distinct possibility that there was another person riding inside the omnibus. You can leave your pointless speculation for the Mr. Court's attorney. No matter what, the burden of proof still falls on you. As you can see, the crime scene sits right over there. Very well, thanks. The call demands an answer. Show us by using this cross section of the omnibus. Show us where another person could have been inside the omnibus. Oh, that's easy. Thank you. Bottom right. 
These roofsies are set, facing the same direction the omnibus moves in. As for the inside, the seats are made to face each other. So, at that time, the rooftop passenger field vision through the skylight was like this. Ooh. That's right, as you can see. They could have seen the seats that were opposite the victim and culprit. Therefore, if there was another passenger in these seats, then it would have been possible for the witnesses to overlook them. So you are saying that it's only possible that there was another passenger seat to the side. It would seem that this direction is but one of your country's flying practices. Hmm? What you say about my country? Indeed, evidence is absolute in the courts of the Great British Empire. It's no surprise to your supposed mystery. However, if you prepare to name this person, it's difficult. Not all the can you do it? Do I have a good idea who it would be? Do I know who it was sitting in the witness's point? I'm gonna say I do. The defense would like to present that person's name. How preposterous. Such is the story of the response of what we must have understood. Nowhere the height of obligation you have just placed upon us. The cause the court requires an answer from the defendant. Yes! This chance for the counterattack I've been waiting for. On that night when the crime took place, the person that I believe was sitting in the blind spot is. Mr. Myrndle! Passenger that the two sitting on the roof overlooked must have been Cosney McGundel. Cosney McGundel? But, but he's the defendant himself? Yes. Imputed of me to shatter the holy trail in the halls of justice. I plead for your forgiveness. Lord Van Zeech! To think I would believe that your tiny overseas nation possess what we call a civilization. What you say about my home? What are you trying to say? I shall tell you what the secret is exchanged to do it who knows nothing of your church. At the time of the incident, the defendant was sitting next to the victim. The witnesses have testified as such. Is this not the premise of the entire case? <laughs> It could very well be, though. The premise itself is wrong. What is this now? If we assume that Mr. McGundle was next to the victim at 
the time limit. Then an unresolvable contradiction arises. Contradiction. These are defendants loud gloves. These two witnesses un unanimously testify to the following. The culprit sitting next to the victim had bloodstains on both his hands. However, the truth is that there was only blood on the glove. The important being. When confronted with this evidence, their testimony did not change. Their testimony didn't change? Yes, even now these two witnesses still claim to clearly remember blood on both hands. Therefore, that memory is the truth. That's how we must look at it. An unknown third party was sitting next to the victim. What's more, blood had Blood must have stained both of their hands. And just who do you suppose this third party is? The true culprit, of course. What? The true culprit? Testify that they distinctly saw the defendant. However, Mr. Fairplay also said this in his testimony. Because both of them were wearing hats, I was unable to make out their faces. Right. It wasn't possible to see their faces from the skyline. Yes, they were both indeed wearing hats. As a hatter, I pay much attention to people's hats. Well, have a dash for In that case, what kind of hats were the two people wearing? I suppose I happen to be a What happened to you being a hatter, huh? In any case, in any case, it is impossible that a third party was inside the coach. And how can you assert that so confidently? Should have said so himself. Huh? Oh, perhaps we'll invent the claim. Even the defendant. Himself overlook the two copies inside the coach. That's right. There was a third person inside the audience. It's difficult to believe that Mr. McGonagall wouldn't have known. Order! The court believes that there is a very simple way to find the answer to this question. And I presume that would be to request the testimony of Cosme and Mugungo Yes, what is the prosecution's opinion for this matter? Naturally, I am a host. Your reason be. A suspect should report everything he knows to the police upon interrogation. But it's possible that there's something which Mr. Magondo didn't mention. Cosme Magondo is a need apart from those foolish small time scoundrels. Hmm? Were he to have concealed any information, then he would have some reason for doing so. What is the defense of 
Well, my lord. Can I ask for Mr. McDonald's testimony? I demand the shit. In order to know the truth behind this, we need to hear what he has to say. The defense asserts that we must hear the defendant's testimony. I believe we should hear what the six jurors have to say as well. Well, I was just in real thinking about it. I would like to hear what Mr. McDonald has to say. Eighty dollars. We had to hurry up and drag that guy. Thinking about it logically, we must hear his testimony. Will you do something? Go all the way. That's the law to do. Your gill sucks ass, sir. That's right! We all want to hear from them! In that case, the court will request testimony from the defense. Bailiff, bring him to the stand immediately. Tries to resume. Defendant, have you been listening to the trial this fall? Of course, ma'am. We seek the answer to two questions. First, does the so called third party anomalous really exist? And second, if this person does exist, why did you withhold this information from the phone? Tell me, I puzzle you all. Ah, oh, I can't hide anything from you. To tell you the truth, I have been unsure whether to mention it or not. The dark side of Willy Wonka, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. McGondal. Good day, sir. I said good day, sir. <laughs> but it is it's just as the good master says. It is true that there are uh, that there was another person inside the horse uh, that night. There was a third passenger? And I let that passenger escape from the crime scene. Not the ge Skills cost me the good. Yes, Mano! Oh, I am really very sorry, Lord Baron von Zix. Why, oh, why did I not tell the police as soon as I was arrested? I suspect my reason for doing so may be a bit questionable. And that reason was. I did not want to get an innocent youth involved in this incident. What is this? If the police knew of her presence, she would surely be suspected, arrested, and maybe even brought to court. I wanted to keep that from happening. One can't warm the hearts of youth when they have. 
Just ahead of them, Ron. Then, who is this innocent youth you speak of? Then I wouldn't know. You would. After all, I met her by chance in the omnibus that night. <laughs> To trust this man is very dangerous. The prosecution asserts that the defendant remarks are not worth listening to. Perhaps that young lady is even now watching over my child from the audience of this courtroom. The fuck? Forced out of the courtroom by the bailiffs. Everyone wanted to get out first and send it into mayhem. As they tried to figure out what was going on, the trial was momentarily suspended. That shit was crazy. Oh boy, that shit is real crazy, dog. What the fuck did we just step into? Oh man. Literally. The fuck? was that I say we should take this shit all the way all the way to the end so what I'm gonna do is give me a good five seconds here But probably more than that. But, um... I'm gonna come back to this in a bit. And in the next part... Should be the conclusion to this... Even more fucked up trial. So... I will be right back. Union break! <laughs> 